every day we make discoveries right here on Earth. Some of these findings are beautiful, some are terrifying, and others are downright confusing. One thing all these new discoveries have in common is that they get us closer to understanding the planet we call home and to understanding our own species. With all these findings, it seems like we are only starting to scratch the surface of what is waiting to be discovered, with new methods and technology making it easier than ever to explore our planet and what is in it, who knows what else we will find in the coming years. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be unfolding three recent findings that occurred here on Earth. Chinese scientists discover giant viruses in the Mariana Trench Within the past five years, a research team based in Shanghai extracted a batch of giant viruses from deep within the Mariana Trench. The findings excited a lot of scientists since they have not before found large viruses that far deep. There also has not been that much successful exploration of the Mariana Trench. Various teams attempted to retrieve viral samples from the trench over the past few years, each failing due to technical difficulty and challenges. The Mariana Trench is a crescent-shaped trench in the western Pacific Ocean that measures about 2,550 kilometers in length and 69 kilometers in width. It is the deepest ocean trench in the world, with the maximum depth reaching 10,984 miles. You could place Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth, in the trench, and it would still sit under two kilometers of water. The researchers took the virus sample from Challenger Deep, which is the deepest known point in the Earth's seabed. This slot-shaped valley sits at the southern end of the trench. There are nearly 1,086 bars of pressure sitting above this point, increasing the water density to 4.96% and keeping the temperature at 1 to 4 degrees Celsius. We have been able to conduct measurements with manned and remotely operated deep diving submersibles and benthic landers. This trench point has more than 1,071 times the standard atmospheric pressure exerted on it than we do at sea level. It is challenging for any complex organism to survive at these depths due to the difficult living conditions. Giant viruses, though, are pretty abundant at these extreme depths. In fact, they are rarer in other atmospheric pressure conditions. Five years ago, the research ship Zhan Jian successfully obtained enough sample material from Challenger Deep to extract genome sequences from 15 different virus species and over 100 types of microorganisms. The team discovered that some species were even larger than a bacterium. They also found mimiviruses within the sediment, which is a species that uses amoeba as its host. The Shanghai team attempted to revive the viruses, although they were unable to. They did manage to raise over 2,000 strains of microorganisms using a high-pressure lab environment. They published their results in the July 2021 issue of Genome Biology, a popular biology journal. The scientists discovered a bit more about mimiviruses due to this sample, despite how small it was. Mimiviruses are intriguing. They can easily be mistaken for bacteria since they have hairy fibers and bodies. They can reach up to 700 nanometers wide and be seen by the naked eye. The genome found in this virus is just as complex. It has over 1.2 million base pairs, far more than any other virus we know of. The novel coronavirus has 40 times fewer pairs. We have seen them cause tissue damage in mammals during experiments, but none have caused direct harm to humans so far. Most viruses are simple parasites that depend on a host. Surprisingly, Mimiviruses contain productive protein production and metabolism genes that are typically only found in independent life forms. The leading theory is that mimiviruses underwent reverse evolution and changed from microbes to viruses. They still retained these productive functions to survive at such extreme depths and living conditions, though. Scientists hypothesize that these genes help the hosts break down nutrients faster. These remain theories, though, because the research team was unable to revive the viruses. They are eager to gather more samples and data to conduct more thorough investigations and better understand unknown viral strains. Studying genetic information is crucial for new drugs and biological innovation. Thousands of massive holes have been found on the ocean floor off the Californian coast. 
California is a thrilling place. From LA to the beach, there is plenty going on to say the least. The abundance of things to do does not end at the coastline, however, as there is something worth checking out in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Big Sur. While some investigation is needed, it is certainly nothing like the high street shopping or beachside fun. Scientists have uncovered a mystery, a puzzling series of holes in the ocean floor, and we are not sure how they got there. We might not have answers as to how these holes got into the ocean floor. It is clear that these newly formed spaces are popular hideouts for a number of marine life species. Plenty of small seafloor animals have made themselves at home in these dark spaces, turning the mystery holes into shelters. Researchers that are checking out these strange holes are from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, and they uncovered a staggering 15,000 unexplained holes in the seafloor. These are not small circles on the floor. These are large, noticeable holes. The average gap spanned 11 meters in diameter and 1 meter in depth. 30% of the pits had human rubbish within them. Not only were the fish living in the holes, but also living within and alongside the rubbish carelessly tossed by neglectful humans. A further 20% found items like stones, kelp holdfast, and one even had a whale skull within it, though sediment that was found surrounding the holes remains empty. The research team was able to discover that these holes exist at all only due to another survey being conducted. The initial survey aimed to study underwater features known as pockmarks. These are bigger dents in the ocean floor, though they are significantly bigger than these holes, clocking in at an average 175 meters wide and 5 meters deep. Pockmarks are significantly easier to research, as they can be seen, detected and identified on ship-mounted sonar. This makes observations and data much simpler to obtain, and so we have known pockmarks line the ocean floor since a 1999 survey. The pockmarks we know of cover 1,300 square kilometers of the sea floor in the coast of Big Sur, with about 5,200 pockmarks accounting for this space. Despite knowing about pockmarks for much longer than these newly found holes, we still do not have any inkling as to what causes either to occur. The Big Sur coast has been considered for an offshore wind farm, and so before any further discussions could go ahead regarding that, more investigation into the odd holes was necessary. One theory suggests that the holes are the result of gases, like methane, bubbling out from underneath the sea floor. If this were true, this would be vital information when it came to the placement of the wind turbines. The Imbari team deployed underwater vehicles to see what more could be found. These robots were automated and fully decked out with sonar devices. The team did not find any evidence of methane, as had been predicted, and even more unexpectedly, there was no evidence of the pockmarks having been active at all over the last 50,000 years. Still, the mission was useful, as this was how the team found the other holes, smaller than the pockmarks. The sonar from the ship had not allowed these to be seen. They had become clearly visible in this new data collection. The next step was to deploy remotely operated vehicles fitted with cameras to take another look. To help differentiate these holes from the much larger pockmarks, the team has begun to refer to them as micro-depressions. The initial observations here seem to suggest that the micro-depressions have been formed much more recently than the pockmarks, have steeper sides, and they have trails of sediment. The team has speculated that the animals living in the rubbish and other items within the depressions could be carving into the holes, making them larger over time. The researchers wrote in their paper, these observations imply that marine trash is at least partly responsible for approximately 4,500 of the 15,000 micro-depressions and provide some clues as to how these micro-depressions are created. The current hypothesis is that an item, whether that is a whale skull or a few items of rubbish, fall and settle on the sea floor. Marine life then decides it seems like a comfy place to set up, moves in and begins to live in and around said item. Their movement disturbs the sediment, meaning a small divot is made in the sea floor, from which the micro-depressions are eventually formed. This is just a hypothesis and one example that would fit under this explanation. One flaw here, however, 
is that some of the micro depressions do not seem to have any items, be that rubbish, skulls or anything similar within them, and this theory does not account for those items. For now, however, we have confirmed that the micro depressions and the pockmarks are different things, not just different sizes of the same phenomenon. This is due to a lack of subsea floor gas activity and the two having morphological differences. Space Hurricane Over the North Pole Whatever you do, you don't want to get caught in a land hurricane. These torrential natural disasters typically bring over raging thunderstorms and strong winds that can knock you straight off your feet. Yet what about a space hurricane? Believe it or not, these types of hurricanes do exist. In fact, a 1,000km plasma space hurricane was found over the North Pole and confirmed by scientists as the first occurrence ever recorded. Even though it's labelled a hurricane, it actually has nothing to do with the stormy tropical hurricanes we're so used to hearing on the news. For one, terrestrial hurricanes take place in Earth's lower atmosphere while space hurricanes occur in the upper atmosphere. Additionally, they're made from a combination of magnetic field lines and solar winds that are composed of the Sun's rapidly moving plasma. As soon as the solar winds start moving at superfast speeds, the magnetic lines will warp the winds into a spiral shape much like our own ground hurricanes. However, instead of rain that's being poured down, we're getting a shower of electrons instead. What's even more unique about these space hurricanes is that they're invisible to the human eye. Scientists only know that it occurred thanks to the help of four satellites that detected it as it stormed on for almost eight hours. They found that the charged particles of the hurricane quickly became a funnel with a similar eye shape at the very centre. In the end, even though there are plenty of resemblances to the land hurricanes we are used to, space hurricanes are still incredibly rare. At least, that is, for planet Earth. It's theorised that space hurricanes are actually pretty common on other planets. As for our home planet, we don't need to be as worried about space hurricanes. It turns out that upper atmospheric phenomena represent little danger for those of us who live in the lower atmosphere. But of course, they still do have some effects on systems we use, like GPS, radio signals and satellite drag. If you ever experience some errors with your GPS or radio systems the next time you're out on the road, chances are you might just have a space hurricane raging right above you. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.